Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Theo from uh, Sarawak. I'm a Malaysian. And uh, this video I'm going to tell you all the ways the Malaysian government cheat during the uh, uh, elections. Under the uh, <coughs> AMNO, United Malay National Organization, which is the main party in, uh, in power in Malaysia, they have been in power for 50 years and they have won all the 13 general elections um, through these 50 years. And uh, in every election, they cheat. And that's why they can remain in power um, in Malaysia for 50 years, <clears throat> in spite of all the, in spite of all the corruption, um, abuse of power, um, locking up all the prisoner, all the uh, opponents, political opponents, and um, massive uh, misuse of funds, and so on. So, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a few ways how uh, they cheat. Um, the easiest way actually is actually to have uh, um, foreigners. There are about two million foreigners who are given identity cards and um, they are from uh, Bangladesh, they are from um, Indonesia and they are allowed to uh, go and vote and these people uh, asked to vote for the AMNO uh, and uh, they have to pledge allegiance to AMNO before they are given identity cards. So there are probably two million of them, uh, probably about half a million or more in Sabah itself. And um, they are not uh, born in this country, they have no birth certificates and uh, they have identity cards and so they go and vote <coughs> for AMNO. The other way they cheat is, of course, uh, by uh, locking up all the uh, political opponents. If you remember, under Dr. Mahathir, 106 uh, political opponents uh, one time was all locked up, all at one time. 106 of them were locked up in jail. Um, that's how um, they win the elections. And even, uh, even recently, uh, our leader, Anwar Ibrahim was a lock up also for six years for no reason, and that's how uh, they can win an election. And uh, the the other way is of course by use of postal votes. These postal voters are soldiers from mostly West Malaysia, and they can uh, put their votes in Sarawak, and uh, they will they are, they are supposed to uh, vote in the army camp. But we know that in the army camp, we are not, uh, opposition are not allowed to enter and uh, the box is actually uh, put there for the soldiers uh, to vote. Uh, but actually, uh, only one commanding officer will be um, uh, marking all the two or three thousand ballot papers, just one person. And uh, the other soldiers will not know what is happening. And uh, we have seen how they do it. There is a ballot box in the army camp or in the police station, and uh, they have registered three or four thousand uh, people, uh, 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 army personnel or police personnel, together with the family, uh, inside uh, that uh, polling station. And uh, there will there will be a few people who come and vote. And and in the evening, this box is blocked up inside the army camp or in the police station, and we are not allowed to see. So. After three three days, it will be locked up in the police station. After three days, it will be locked up in the police station in the evening, and uh, we um, we don't know what happened in the evening. So on the third day, when the ballot paper uh, when the ballot papers are counted as usual, there will be ninety nine or ninety nine point nine percent for the government. You know. And we know that uh, a number of ex-military uh, um, people have come out and said that they never voted. Only the commanding officer voted for everybody. So this is one way they cheat uh, by uh, getting the 
soldiers and the family from West Malaysia to come here and vote. And so uh, they are able <coughs> to influence and uh, the, 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 the Sarawak uh, uh, voters, uh, uh, the, vote, the voting in Sarawak, and uh, that's how they, they always win. So um, that, that is the most glaring way. And of course, uh, anybody who support the opposition, they will withdraw the uh, government welfare aid, they will threaten them to lose their jobs or the, the children, uh, they say they, they will not allow them to go to school in that particular area, and that actually has happened. And a lot of uh, natives in the rural areas, they uh, uh, complain that uh, they have been harassed by people in the government. And of course, those people who run the election are people who are appointed by the government, and these are people who are pro-government. Those people who run the uh, election commission, those people who are in the army who run the election, those people in the civil service and um, civil servants, they are all supposed to be picked for to run the elections because they are pro-government and uh, they are not fair. It's like uh, United, uh, uh, Manchester United playing football with uh, Liverpool and the linesmen belong, are appointed by Manchester United. The referee are appointed by Manchester United and Liverpool has no say and this is actually what is happening. Even the judges, even the police are all selected so that they are people who are only pro-government, who can be uh, influenced, who can be pushed around. These are the people who are running the government. And so uh, you can see that now they are saying that the, ele the opposition leader uh, will be charged again for sodomy and the police are going to, uh, attorney general are going to file more and more charges against him. Uh, based on the record of a young boy who is obviously telling lies all the time. Um, so this is what is happening in Malaysia and Malaysia is no longer a democracy. It is a fake democracy. Um, <coughs> and finally, <coughs> the most obvious reason uh, uh, how they win the election is very simple. In, in Sarawak, uh, if you can see, let's say there are 100 eligible voters in Sarawak. Uh, these are the people who are over 21 years old. Uh, of course, the children uh, are not eligible. <coughs> um, the voting age in Malaysia is 21. So between 18 and 21, they are not allowed to vote. Anyway, um, 68 of these 100 are registered voters. 32 in Sarawak, that is 32 percent of the of the, of the uh, eligible voters are not uh, registered. Why? These 32 percent are the rural people or the town people who find that it is no, uh, uh, it doesn't make any difference whether or not they vote. For example, in the rural areas, um, the natives, the Pinans, the Punans, they live so far away, they don't even have a birth certificate, they don't even have identity cards, and so they cannot vote. And for them to register as a voter, it is very, very far. So they find that <coughs> it is too costly to, for them to register as a voter and the government does and not actually want them to vote because a lot of their lands have been taken away by the government and they're not happy. And also, a lot of dams are being built on their land to flood their farms and their homes. So these people are not happy in the rural areas, but they do not allow them to vote or they are not encouraged to vote because they do not want to make it uh, automatic registration for everybody above 21. So to, to not allowing automatic registration means they do not allow a large section of the people to vote. But anyway, out of 68 registered voters, 58 to 65 percent turn out during the election, 
which means that only about 40 people out of 100 actually go to vote. And um, in a fair democracy where one man has one vote, you can see that uh, you need to win the election, you need 20 out of 40, half, in order to win. For example, in America, Obama versus Bush. Obama needs to get about 50% of the people to vote him in order to win the presidential election. But in Sarawak, it is different. There are many, many small little constituents which have only 10% of uh, the vo voters compared to the big constituents which have uh, 10 times more people. So, out of 40 people in Sarawak, four are in the small government control uh, where, the, where the government is power, uh, government supporters are concentrated and where the opposition are, they have about 40 or, or more people in that area. So, one man in this small area has actually 10 votes compared to a man in this big area. So by having tiny little areas, our chief minister is able to win all the elections in spite of uh, all the protests and uh, so on. So if you can see that uh, for these four people out of 100, he needs only two and a half of these four. He needs two and a half percent of the hundred in order to win that each seat. In the big areas, particularly in the towns, the people, there are big numbers, ten times more than the small areas. So that is why our chief minister, Tai Mahmoud, can win the Sarawak election if he has between two to five percent of people supporting him. These are the, his uh, stronghold areas and um, only 2 to 5% uh, of the voters in these areas. All the big areas, they have lots of voters, but they are big areas, and so it is impossible for the opposition to win. Let's put it in another way. Manchester United has 100 players in the football field. Liverpool, 10, uh, 11. The referee belongs to Manchester United. The linesman belongs to Manchester United. And do you expect Liverpool to win the football game when they have only 10% of the players on the field? So that is why they have been able to win 13 general elections by this method. Tiny little areas with few voters controlling the game. And so, Malaysian, vote, Malaysian democracy is a fake democracy. This is just one way they're cheating. I can tell you there are 36 other ways. And if you look out for my videos, I will tell you all the other ways as well. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you look up my other videos as well. Thank you. <coughs>